Greetings everyone and Happy New Year and welcome to the first episode of this year's Laptop Gamer. Um, was going to do Rage, um, but unfortunately due to John Carmack's genius um, and some very strange V-Sync that's used on the game, I wasn't able to get any decent capture footage. So today we're going to do something a bit different. Rather than just look at one game, I'm going to look at a few. Um, and these are by no means um, <laughs> the top ever games or anything like that. This isn't really a rundown um, or a top 10 or anything like that. It's merely some games that I came across which work really well with integrated graphics. Now, for those who aren't in the know, integrated graphics tend to be the graphics card that the manufacturer put on the uh, CPU. So, so if you're using an Intel um, i7 or an i5, you're going to have the HD 3000 or the HD 4000. 4000 obviously being a bit better. Now, I'm just using it from my standpoint, so the caveat is I'm using an i7 processor. But all of these games and all of the games that you're going to see um, have a few prerequisites to make it on this list. First of all, they've got to play at 720p. Secondly, they've got to run at least 30 frames a second. Now, the reason that they're at these uh, uh, different um, limits is because uh, that's console quality. And if you're going to have some decent gaming, you're going to want some at least console quality. So, without further ado, I'm going to run down a few of my favourite games I use with integrated graphics and this is for those emergencies where you don't have your power pack on you or you uh, don't want the fan going off or um, you, you don't want your legs to be uh, toasted by the uh, the graphics card for long play sessions it, it doesn't matter um, most gaming laptops for those again who, who don't know this now have a dual graphic, graphics card um, option you can either use the graphics card that's on the chip or you can use the graphics card which is your beast that's lurking within which in my case is the 6 and 5 m but everything you're see, going to see uh, is going to be as it would be running on integrated graphics so I hope you enjoy this, it's a little medley I've put together um, so let's get started okay so first off, it, well it had to be really, Doom more specifically the new BFG edition which not only um, has the original Doom, it has Doom 2, um, Hell on Earth, and it also has um, Doom 3. Now, um, this should actually run pretty well on most um, integrated graphics solutions, at least the original one, but this runs even better. Um, it looks as though there's been some tweaks that have been made, especially to Doom 3, where there's a, a hell of a lot more baked lighting. What I mean by that is that the lighting's not dynamic, or at least not as dynamic as it was in the original, which really does give your uh, uh, integrated graphics solution a bit of breathing room. It plays just as well as it always did, except now um, all of the games have got uh, controller support. Now I hear everybody going, you can't play Doom of all things with a controller well you can and it's actually quite enjoyable um, sometimes I you know particularly if I'm on the go I don't want to set up my mouse it's a lot easier to play with a with a, um, a controller so Doom 3 as you can see here looks absolutely gorgeous it's running as it would do on an Xbox 360 or a PlayStation 3 that's not saying much um, it does have this uh, new motion blur on it which actually makes the game look pretty cool um, and equally you can run around with your flashlight um, and have your gun out at the same time which uh, did not appear in the original version of Doom 3 this game is still a classic though um, still plays really well, still a lot of fun It'll, it, it will be a bit of a change for most people who are used to running gun shooters simply for the fact that you've got to conserve ammo in this game and you've got to look around every corner it's not all about big crashing experiences, it's, it's a very spooky game. But it runs really well on an uh, integrated graphics solution, it'll get well above 30 frames a second. And you might even be able to put in a little bit of anti-alasing as well. Uh, so Doom 3 definitely gets a thumbs up as far as uh, integrated graphics are concerned. Uh, 
Ah, Tales from Space, Mutant Blobs Attack. What an excellent title for a game, and an absolutely corking indie title. This was originally intended for the PlayStation Vita, I believe, but eventually got ported, or at least was released at the same time, uh, to everything else, really. Um, it's, it's a very simple game in premise. You've got to go around all of these locations um, and uh, basically absorb stuff. The more stuff, stuff you absorb, the um, bigger you'll get and the stronger you'll get. And the stronger you get means that you'll be able to pass um, through different objects and get further along. The controls are really simple. It's a very easy game to pick up. And running at um, 720p, it still looks crisp and, and as you can see, the art style is absolutely gorgeous. It's got a nice, for, well, for want of a better word, fluid animation. And um, there's lots of nice little physics puzzles and things like that. And also the beauty of this game as well is because of the simplified graphics, it's, it's going to run incredibly well even on an integrated graphics chip. So it's definitely one to consider if you haven't already. It's a lot of fun and um, it's got a very wicked sense of humour and that's always a good thing in a game in my opinion. Well this one had to be on here didn't it? Half-Life 2, this is Valve's magnum opus. It really is an absolutely outstanding achievement as a game. But also, graphically, the Source Engine is quite remarkable. It scales very well to lower end systems. I remember when this was first released and, and everybody was worried about whether their computers could run it. And to the surprise of many, it could. Um, and that holds true to this day. Um, it's, it's a very friendly game to even laptops. I mean, I remember I used to be able to play this game at quite high settings on my old um, MacBook, which had a 9400GS, I believe. So, even with all the heavy physics and, and the beautiful graphics, it still holds up incredibly well on an integrated graphics solution. It's cheap as chips now, and if you haven't played this, you've been living under a rock, or were abducted uh, by North Koreans, or whatever has happened to you, you have to play this game. Do yourself a favour. It runs incredibly well on most lap modern laptops, should I say, um, and it can be uh, purchased for a very small price. Um, I wouldn't advise going any further than Half-Life 2. By that, I, I mean I really wouldn't advise um, going for Episode 1 or Episode 2, because in the time between uh, the, the episodes and the original game, they did add some extra things like um, high dynamic range lighting and a few extra bells and whistles which bobbed down the uh, source engine a bit more. But Half-Life 2, the original, not the episodes, runs incredibly well to this day. Definitely worth picking up um, and um, is a must for any good, uh, <laughs> any PC gamer worth their salt. It's one of those ones where if you still haven't played it and everybody talks about it, it's one of the few games that you're not going to be disappointed with at all. Pick it up, it's definitely worth a buy. Now this next one is quite cool because if you'd told me back in the early 90s when I was a teenager that I'd be able to have not one, not two, but three Mortal Kombat games on my laptop computer I would have told you just simply to go away and perform a fatality on yourself. Um, but no, Midway have released um, the wonderful Mortal Kombat trilogy, the original the three original arcade games and they are arcade perfect in every way. The first game uh, to many modern fighting fans may seem a bit slow now but um, back then we were absolutely astounded at what we saw. We couldn't believe that I remember that saying the level of realism will never be matched. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, we had to do with some shoddy uh, console ports on the Super Nintendo and the, I remember the Mega Drive version playing well but looking awful. So you could never get an all-rounded decent experience. The Super Nintendo of course didn't, famously didn't have the blood. But this game is so cool. Um, I 
r remember spending vast amounts of money and, and walking for miles to go to an arcade um, in the in the next town, which was uh, uh, which had the machine. Now, Mortal Kombat 2, when that was released, it was an even bigger deal. Um, they upped the ante in every possible way. The animations were better. Um, there were far more characters than before. The art style had changed to be a bit more fantastical, but still had the elements of the digitized sprites and things. It it was a cut above what had come before it. Um, although the original playstyle was pretty much there, um, you could you could you felt very comfortable going from Mortal Kombat One to Mortal Kombat Two. There was just enough to keep people interested. Now, a little known fact about this particular version of the uh, game um, on the PC, I do believe it's also on Xbox and uh, PS3, is that you can actually enable the scan lines as though it's a, um, a monitor, which is really, really cool. It, it, makes, it makes your screen look like an arcade cabinet. And again, there might be viewers out there who <laughs> can't remember proper arcade machines or going around, standing around arcade machines. Uh, the, ex the whole experience is long, long gone now. But um, you used to have these little pixelated scan lines on the um, rather low-resolution screens that the, were part of the arcade cabinet. But uh, I digress. Uh, the graphics options on here are minimal, so what you're essentially getting are emulations of the original machines, which means, of course. Uh, because we're, we're talking about early 90s, mid 90s tech here, it's all going to be very, very easy to handle with an integrated graphics card. Now, m the the only one I think that lets the side down, and I was never too comfortable with it, was Mortal Kombat 3. Um, they'd changed up the fighting style, they'd added combos and breakers and um, and a run button of all, of all bloody things. And I just couldn't get on with it at all. As, as is probably seen in this footage, not only can I no longer remember the moves of Scorpion, which is unforgivable, um, I, I get my ass handed to me by Jade, uh, which is not a particularly bad thing, but um, considering I haven't played it in years. But this is, again, very cheap and definitely worth your time. Jade wins. Oh, the wonderful Mountain Blade. Um, the great thing about this game, okay, I'm, I, I confess I am quite the graphics whore when it comes to games. I do love graphics and I do believe it helps with the immersion, but somehow this game won me over. It's not so much a RPG as more a, an actual medieval experience. You can do anything you want in this game. You can work for the local lord or king and and go up the ranks of his uh, court or you can become your own mercenary and get a whole band of people together and who can fight on your side there's trade there's um there's all sorts of things that you can do in this game and the beauty of it is that the engine that it runs on is very very friendly to integrated graphics solutions um maybe not the further releases where they started using hdr lighting uh, your performance would be a bit lower, although I think you could probably handle the, um, the later releases. But Mountain Blade, the initial game, um, certainly you, you'll be able to play it no problem using uh, something like the Intel HD 3000. And as you can see, it, it, it's pretty cool. It takes a lot of getting used to, and there are some eccentricities to the game. But um, it all adds to the sort of realism. For example, you don't just shoot a crossbow at somebody and expect to hit them straight in the head and get a headshot. Your weapons are unreliable, um, as, as are most of your parties sometimes, but if you're looking for an RPG experience, you can't go wrong here. Get ready for today's spectacular excitement from Tokyo Town. I can handle this myself. Three, two, one. For many, many years, the only karting game that ever really mattered was Mario Kart. We're talking stretching all the way back to the 16-bit era. And um, there were a few pretenders along the way, uh, but nothing could ever match it. Uh, particularly in an era where you didn't have online multiplayer. This game comes along and completely shatters that. Um, in my opinion, um, this game, and particularly its sequel, which I picked up for the Wii U, um, unfortunately the sequel is not on the PC yet, but 
uh, it will be, uh, is a far superior kart racing game. It's just that you never feel that cheated with this. Yeah, alright, the higher difficulties can be brutal, but um, with Mario Kart, if somebody gets that blue shell, you're dead. Whereas here, it's, it's more to do with skill. Now, Mario Kart you know, is in the familiar world of the Mushroom Kingdom with its lovely pastel colours. But look at this. I mean, it's bright, it's vibrant. It, it looks as though somebody has force-fed LSD to a child of four um, and watched them have a fever dream inside their head. Um, God knows what the people at Sega have been smoking all these years since the Dreamcast flopped. But I, t I tell you what, I wouldn't mind trying some of it. Uh, anyway, this is a wonderful kart racing game. It has brilliantly designed tracks, it has uh, an array of interesting power-ups, and above all, it will run beautifully on integrated graphics solutions. Um, bearing in mind that my, my chip is an i7 chip, I was able to run this game at 720p, which is what it would be running at on the consoles, but I was able to run it at nearly 60 frames a second which is a very fluid experience indeed. Now, I doubt that the sequel to this will be as friendly to integrated graphics cards as this game is, as the sequel is infinitely more complicated. But you can take solace in the fact that this is still an incredibly strong racing game, and it will be, it, it should be pretty cheap now. I think I picked mine up on, in the Steam sale, but um, it, it should still be pretty pretty cheap when that sale ends. So, if you're in in the uh, market for a good kart racer on the PC, which you can pretty much count those on one hand, it's certainly not F1 races. Um, you definitely pick this up. Um, it's a great title, and it also for for people of my age, it's immensely nostalgic. Being able to play as, not only as Sonic, but as many of the characters we grew up playing. Um, is an absolute boom. So this, this, if I was to rate it as a, as a, in one of my reviews, would get a full on five out of five. If you haven't tried it yet? Give it a go. You've got nothing to lose. Torchlight. Now. I wasn't a, the biggest fan of, of this sort of style, Diablo style of game. Um, it, it never really sort of appealed to me all that much, but I picked this up on a whim and I'm really glad I did. Um, it's, it's just a hell of a lot of fun. Um, for anybody who's played Diablo, the premise is pretty much the same. It's a loot, it's a loot game really. Um, with RPG mechanics and um, and it sort of has an MMO you know, clicky style of fighting but you know the, as with most of those type of games the, there is a depth to it it's not just click one button here and, and, and watch the attack go you've got to think about what you're doing um, although I'm not really doing it here in this footage I know but um, I'm just picking up the footage for the review uh, it's it was I was really impressed by this game and um, particularly because it really kicks Diablo 3's ass. I know the sequel is apparently miles better than, than the original, so um, if that's the case, I'll probably be picking that one up soon. Um, I hate pretentious studios, and I particularly hate the way Blizzard has treated their fans in recent months. Um, this online, always an online connection for uh, Diablo 3 is the very reason I did not pick it up. Um, and seeing other people suffer through that whole Code 37 debacle, I'm so glad that Torchlight exists. It gives people a genuine option if they want to play this style of game. And yeah, alright, the, the graphics are very sort of World of Warcraft, but that means that like World of Warcraft, it will play very well on your integrated graphics solution. So if you want a good uh, gathering game, or should I say loot based game, check it out. Bastion. This was another game that surprised me somewhat. Um, as I've always mentioned in, in my reviews, when critics gush over something, I, I tend to take everything with a huge EU stockpile of salt. 
The gaming industry is often full of bullshit, let's face it. Some of the major uh, um, sites that I visit, and still do, um, some of the journalism on there is pretty, pretty poor. But, God, did they get most of their high scores right on this game. Um, it's quite unique. Um, it does things in a very unique way. Uh, the basic premise is that there's been some sort of catastrophe within the world, and all that's left of these fragments, these bastions. Now, your character goes through the game and um, uh, is trying to basically piece together pieces of this bastion using these crystals. And um, it's, a, it's a very fun game. Uh, the presentation is fantastic from the um, animation to the really strong uh, voiceover, which uh, has a sort of this, um, American style narration to everything you do, which happens dynamically, including falling off a cliff, just like I did there. Um, it's 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 a marvelous game, um, and um, it's it, I suppose it's a action RPG. But what it really reminded me of was way back when I was a kid, and some of the isometric games that you used to have on the old Commodore 64 and Spectrums. Um, mixed with modern mechanics and obviously a, a fresh uh, coat of paint. But again, this is a very cheap game and the graphics options are minimal on it. I think you can just choose between having a um, high resolution and um, um, a bit of anti-alasing. Um, but that's all you need. Play it, played at 720p, you're getting exactly the same experience as you would on Xbox Live and probably at a higher frame rate, I should imagine, as well. Um, so if you haven't picked up this game for whatever reason, give it a try. It it does a few very unique things, and in a game in the industry which is just full of the same stale old rubbish, um, this is a breath of fresh air, and um, it it draws you into a very unique and interesting world, and you want to find out what's going on because it's never really truly explained to you at the beginning. So. Um, Bastion, again, if I was reviewing this, I mean, it's a very strong, it's definitely a 4 out of 5. If you have a chance, pick it up. Keeping his fellas in check, almost like he's showboating for the crowd. Every gamer has that one game which sort of stays with them over the years, and for me, it's beyond good and evil. This is one of Ubisoft's early masterpieces and it is a truly outstanding game. It, it's, I suppose if you were to categorise it, it's, um, it's an action RPG at heart, but it offers so much more. I mean, you can go around taking photos of wildlife and selling them. You can uh, experience uh, speed racing in your hoverboat. You can um, follow the, interest, the intrigues of the interesting storyline. Uh, where nothing really is as it seems. It appears as though there's an inva alien invasion going on, but the very people who are supposed to protect you seem dodgy as all hell. Now, graphically, it still holds up well to this day. It has fantastic lighting and animation, and the voice acting is superb. Um, a little known fact that the engine that this is running on also powered many other Ubisoft hits, particularly the Prince of Persia series, and it's called you know, for no uh, <laughs> uh, other reason that, than the protagonist of this game, the Jade Engine, um, and it works really well with integrated graphics solutions. Uh, uh, running on the Intel HD 3000, I had no problem running this game. As you can see, it looks pretty stunning. Um, and I, I mean, I could gush about this game forever. Um, this, you know, this is a well over a five out of five as far as I'm concerned. It's a game that I keep going back to. It's a game that I thoroughly enjoy, and I love the fact that the female protagonist in this game, they, they don't flaunt the fact that she's female. She just is, and it's a very strong game as a result of that. Sid Meier's Civilization 4, possibly the pinnacle of strategy games as far as I'm concerned. Um, a truly wondrous, epic um, game which uh, takes the civilization from uh, cavemen through to the space age and does it with such finesse and 
wondrous design. You never feel overwhelmed in this game, despite of its scope, and that is its true achievement. It also runs incredibly well on integrated graphics solution. Um, it's running on the Gamebryo engine, which is the same thing that the Elder Scrolls series runs on, but it it doesn't really chew up uh, chew up your graphics card. Um, and um, providing you're playing it at around 720p, you'll be able to have a few um, advanced uh, graphics settings on and have no problem running this game. Now, it has an outstanding soundtrack. Um, it's it's truly epic and matches the the scope of the game perfectly. The art style is kind of cartoony, but it it's quite fitting as well. And you will lose hours to this game without even blinking. You will lose absolutely hours to it. Um, uh, you will probably put it in at eight o'clock in the evening, and it will be two in the morning, and you still want more. Now, if that's not the sign of excellent game design I do not know what is and the, the sheer cherry on top of the cake as far as I'm concerned is they have Leonard Nimoy doing all the narration yes Spock is doing the narration it doesn't get geekier but it doesn't get better than this it is entirely seemly for a young man killed in battle to lie mangled by the bronze spear in his death all things appear fair The last game on my list here <laughs> is outrageously funny and a lot of fun to play. Um, it's, I suppose it's an indie game, I think it first appeared on Xbox Live and then eventually on the PC. I could be wrong there, but um, it's Death Spank. And uh, if, if you love RPGs, I think you'll love this game because it really does take the piss out of RPGs. But in a good way, in a fond way. Um, for example, the, the whole goal of the game for Death Spank is to go after this thing just called the Artifact. It doesn't need to be called anything more than the Artifact uh, for the game to get underway. Um, he's an arrogant, pompous ass who thinks he's a lot better than he is. And he, he is kind of condescending towards anybody that he comes across. But the gameplay is simple but fun. Uh, a bit like Torchlight in some ways in that there's a lot of loot to gather but there are fleshed out quests within the game world and it has a very unique looking art style um, it's not exactly 2.5D, it is kind of 3D um, but there's a restrictive camera and um, it runs really well on integrated graphics cards um, I ran this on my um, Intel HD 3000 and was getting way above um, 30 frames a second with it and um, definitely worth checking out again it's a budget title it's not immensely long but you wouldn't expect it to be that money but there are sequels and um, it's it, if you want a good laugh if you've had a hard day at work or whatever and you just need to have a good laugh but you want to play a game I can't rate anything higher than Death Spank it's a lot of fun and it just has to be experienced time for Death Spank to do some weeding so what can we actually um, see from all of this? Well, it, it's perfectly reasonable that if you've got a good CPU, solid CPU, and um, obviously the RAM requisites to run the, the game, you, you can actually have a fair amount of decent gaming on a laptop. Now, most manufacturers of non-gaming laptops tend to have quite powerful CPUs and lousy graphics options. This is changing, particularly with the uh, introduction of the i5 and i7 processors. They t uh, particularly as well, the, the Intel 4000, which is even better than the one I'm using. Um, and what we can you know, gather from all of this is that it's perfectly reasonable to have a good gaming experience on a laptop that doesn't have a fully, um, fully powerful <laughs> graphics card. Um, something which can, um, you know, belt out crisis or whatever is not always necessary to have a good gaming experience, particularly if it's gaming on the go. But 
One of the reasons why I've produced this video is that many people may already have the power to run these games and they don't even know it. Um, and many people who are thinking about getting into laptop gaming uh, may want to just try out playing games on laptop to see if it's for them. So this video is for you. Um, as for uh, the rest of the, this season, I'm, I'm hoping to uh, get back on to doing my regular reviews and something a little less abstract uh, next week, but um, uh, we'll have to wait and see as long as I don't have any technical issues. Oh, I love technology, I really do. Anyway, I'm a laptop gamer and thanks for watching.